Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird or atypical side effects of gabapentin, which is also known as Neurontin. Before we talk about those weird side effects, let's talk about gabapentin and how it works. So gabapentin is going to be a gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA analog, and GABA is going to be the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it's going to essentially work like GABA and ultimately lead to generalized inhibition of neuronal functioning. That's how it's going to work. Now, gabapentin is going to be used to treat partial seizures and post-herpetic neuralgia. That's what it's going to be marketed to treat. But it has many off-label uses as well, including as treatment for restless leg syndrome, fibromyalgia, diabetic neuropathy, and irritable bowel syndrome. Now, gabapentin is going to cause a variety of mild and or severe side effects. And these include drowsiness and fatigue, dizziness, ataxia. Ataxia is going to be clumsiness. So you can think of it like that, difficulty with muscle coordination. So each of these will occur in roughly 20% of patients. Tremors can also be noted in patients on gabapentin and gastrointestinal effects. There are many different gastrointestinal effects and some of them will be with regards to weight gain. There can be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. So there are many different gastrointestinal effects by gabapentin. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on the common side effects of gabapentin. But this lesson, we're talking about weird and atypical side effects, the ones that are going to be, in some cases, severe. So we're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. Now let's discuss the weird or atypical side effects of gabapentin use. There are many different atypical side effects, and we're going to break it down by bodily system. The first system we're going to look at is the ophthalmological system, so that's the eyes. So the first side effect is going to be diplopia, and diplopia is simply a term we use for double vision. So double vision can occur in patients taking gabapentin. The diplopia may be mild, so it can look something like this, and but more mild in some cases, and it's going to occur in roughly 5 to 10 percent of patients, so it's not going to be a very uncommon finding. We can also see nystagmus. Nystagmus is going to be something like this. So it's going to be rapid involuntary eye beats toward one side. So if you're to look toward one side and then look toward the other side, you can notice this beating of the eyes back toward the previous side, for instance. And it can occur in up to 5 to 10% of patients as well. So again, it's not going to be a very rare side effect. Now, another potential ophthalmological side effect is known as amblyopia. So amblyopia is simply a term for a lazy eye or a poor or blurry vision, especially in one eye. It's going to be rarely in both eyes with gabapentin. And this is going to occur in 1% to 5% of patients. So the next group of side effects are psychological side effects. And some of these include depression. So mood changes, especially depression, may occur with gabapentin use. This can contribute to low energy and fatigue. We talked about before, drowsiness, fatigue are going to be very common side effects of gabapentin use. And it may be due to gabapentin-related central nervous system neuronal inhibition. So we talked about the fact that gabapentin suppresses neuronal activity, so it can perhaps lead to a suppressed cognition, and that may make patients feel like they have a bit of a lower mood. This can affect 1% to 5% of gabapentin users. We can also see anxiety and nervousness occurring as well. So this can occur with gabapentin use. It's going to be more likely to occur in patients prone to anxiety. So that's important to make note of as well. Now, abnormal thinking can also be a potential side effect of gabapentin use. So this is essentially going to be something that's noted when we look at side effects. There's a list of side effects of gabapentin use, and one of them is going to be abnormal thinking. So it's essentially having strange thoughts, thoughts that are not thoughts that you'd normally have. So it's going to be thinking about things that are unusual for the patient. Either it could be things that are related to the depressed mood, for instance, or anxiety. So it's not going to be a very specific category of side effects, but it is something that is noted with regards to side effects of gabapentin. And it may be due to the effects of neuronal functioning in general. So again, gabapentin is going to suppress neuronal activity, and that can ultimately lead to differences in neuronal functioning and ultimately lead to differences in perhaps thought patterns or thoughts in general. And an, another very important side effect to look out for with gabapentin use is suicidality. So this can be associated with mood changes and depression. Again, the lower mood may induce these types of thoughts. So gabapentin has been noted to lead to increased suicidal ideation in some rare cases. It's again going to be especially significant in patients with previous history of mental disorders, including if they've had previous suicidal ideation in the past. So this is all going to be important with regards to side effects of gabapentin. We may also see amnesia occurring in some patients. So amnesia is going to 
be a loss of some memory. It's more going to be a poor memory or poor memory retention. That's going to be more important. It can be temporary. So when you come off the medication, you can have your memory improve after stopping the medication. This is especially going to occur at higher doses. And again, it's more likely to be due to decreased or suppressed neuronal activity. And we can also see cognitive decline in patients with gabapentin. So it can be generalized cognitive decline. So some patients have been noted to have reduced executive functioning, reduced attention. This is again going to especially occur in higher doses and older patients are going to be more susceptible due to metabolism and excretion issues and also because older patients are more risk for having cognitive decline in general. So gabapentin in older patients can induce some of these especially cognitive decline but also some of the poor memory as well. We may also see something called hyperkinesia. So it's going to be a restlessness that the patients feel that leads to excessive movements generally and it affects three to five percent of patients and it's more common in children. We may also see hostility as well. So being irritable, more aggressive, or angrier, this is again going to be more common in children. The next system we're going to talk about is dermatological system. So it's going to be referring to the skin. So we may see something called erythema multiforme. So erythema multiforme is going to look like this. It's going to be raised, reddened, and target shaped or targetoid skin lesions. So again, it's going to look like this. It looks like a little target. And if you were to actually feel these or palpate them, they're going to be raised. They're going to be generalized, so they can be found anywhere on the body. And they're going to be immune mediated. So there's going to be a immune system dysfunction related to gabapentin that's causing these skin lesions. And it's going to be self-limited, so it won't last forever. So it can start to resolve as time goes on. We may also see something called angioedema. So angioedema is going to be a rare side effect. It's going to be a swelling of lips and tongue. And it may be severe in some cases where the tongue and some of the parts of the throat may become swollen where it can be difficult to breathe. Again, this is going to be a rare side effect. It can be found in other medications, but this is one that can be noted to cause angioedema as well. And another very important dermatological finding we may see in gabapentin is something called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. So Stevens-Johnson syndrome is going to look like this in some cases. It's going to be a very rare condition. It is serious and potentially fatal. So it's going to be a very rare side effect of many medications. So gabapentin is one of them. 80% of cases of Stevens-Johnson syndrome is going to be due to a reaction to some medication. And a lot of the medications that can cause this are antibiotics. And it's essentially going to be a loss of skin. So it can be necrotic lesions around the body. So it has skin slothing off. So there's loss of skin and in some cases, mucous membranes as well. And Stevens-Johnson syndrome is going to be defined as less than 10% of surface area of the body being affected. So that's going to be key with regards to Stevens-Johnson syndrome. We may also see musculoskeletal side effects as well. These include back pain. So mild back pain may occur. It's estimated to occur in one to 5% of patients. So this is not going to be a rare side effect. It can be more likely to occur than other side effects we've mentioned before. Asthenia is also another side effect. Asthenia is just a term we use for muscle weakness. So feeling weak can occur with gabapentin use and it's going to be generalized weakness. So you may feel it on your arms, your legs, or other parts of the body. Myalgia can also occur. Myalgia is going to be a muscle ache and pain. It's estimated to occur in one to 5% of patients. Again, it's not going to be an uncommon side effect. And we may also see rhabdomyolysis in some cases. So this is going to be more rare. Rhabdomyolysis is going to be where there's severe muscle damage. It's essentially where muscles break down and parts of the muscle, especially something called myoglobin, which is inside the muscle, can be released into the blood. And this myoglobin in the blood can ultimately lead to kidney injury or kidney damage. So this is going to be an important condition to detect. So this is something that can also occur in some very rare cases with gabapentin. And we may also see some immunological and pulmonological side effects. So relating to the immune system and relating to the lungs and the respiratory system. So these include pharyngitis. So pharyngitis is going to be a sore throat. This is estimated to affect one to 5% of patients. We may also see rhinitis occurring in some patients. So rhinitis is going to be a runny nose, sneezing, congestion. This can also affect one to 5% of patients. And we can also see a mild increased risk of infections in patients taking gabapentin as well. Not all patients will have this, but some can have a mild increased risk of infections. And then respiratory depression is going to be a very important side effect to make note of here. It's a serious side effect. It's essentially where the gabapentin leads to a depressed respiratory drive. It's going to be more likely to occur 
in some cases where patients are taking other medications that can suppress neuronal functioning as well. So if there's gabapentin and some other medication that's suppressing neuronal functioning, this can increase the risk of depressed respiratory drive or respiratory depression. And again, this is going to be a severe or serious side effect. And there are also reproductive side effects as well. So gabapentin can in some cases lead to what we would call gabapentin-induced sexual dysfunction. So sexual dysfunction in this case can refer to many different side effects. Some of these include erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, so a lower sexual desire or lower sexual drive, and anejaculation and anorgasmia are also potential side effects of gabapentin-induced sexual dysfunction as well. Please check my other lesson on the common side effects of gabapentin if you want more information on side effects. And also please check out my lesson on what to avoid when taking gabapentin to learn about other things that can increase the risk for having respiratory depression as well. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.